This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're going to be lifting things up and putting them down. Welcome back. As you can see, the layout is in complete disarray, which if you have been model railroading for a while, means only one thing, scenery is underway. But I'm gonna focus on that in a layout update that is upcoming. Right now, I wanna talk about this little set of buildings right here. This is a little merchant's row of four buildings, and as you can see, it's completely removable. It's also wired for lighting, and we're gonna go into building that. Now, some of you may say, Jimmy, didn't you do a modular removable city block before I did but I also that was a while ago and I don't think I did that great of a job at least by my standards on doing that compared to what I do now so I wanted another crack at it and I figured the new layout is a great time to do that so we're going to go into how I made this module and wired it for lighting let's get started we are going to be building this module on a sheet of styrene. This particular sheet is 0 0.04 inches thick and it is an 8x10 sheet. I will link it in the description below and I'm going to bring the buildings in that are going to be on this. Now for me, these are some of my 3D printed buildings. Specifically, these are some imperfect prints that came off that I've actually just had laying around for a while and I thought would make a good merchant's row. So we're going to take four of these buildings and glue them together to make a good merchant's row. But first I need to come up with the proper arrangement which took a little bit of time but you want to make sure that you get this right and then I was able to score and cut the sheet of styrene to size now when I marked for the scoring lines what I did was I basically just scored the styrene and then I was able to snap it this is one of the things I really like about thinner styrene is it gives you some nice clean lines when you can score it using a ruler or some sort of guide and then you just snap it right off Once that's done, I put the buildings back on just to make sure that I have the placement right and everything is the right size. And then of course, I wouldn't be a good modeler if I didn't put it on the layout just to see what it looked like at first. You can see that I'm also doing another building, but we're not gonna focus on that one too much. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I'm going to drill holes for lights. And I have the buildings in place and I'm just using a Sharpie and drawing circles wherever I need to, to mark the spots for the buildings. And I also do the other one as well, but it's already actually a building that I salvaged from my last layout and I'm just marking it like that. I then use the template to get roughly where I need to drill for the feeder wire for the power and I use a super long 18 inch drill bit to get all the way through to the bottom of my layout. Yes guys I finally bought a really long drill bit. This is a 3 8 inch drill bit. Next, I just use the drill bit to poke some holes in the styrene for the lights. Um, there's several ways that you can do this, and I probably, probably wouldn't recommend doing it this way. The easiest way is going to be put this down on a piece of scrap wood and drill straight through with the styrene secure, but this worked for me. One thing you do want to make sure when you're doing this is you do want to take this relatively slow and don't use a ton of pressure because styrene can kind of shoot off in all sorts of different directions and give you a lot of frays and edges rather than a clean cut. So you just want to make sure that you do this nice and slow. You can see I'm taking quite a while to punch through four one hundredths of an inch of plastic. Now it is time to prep for painting. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue all of my buildings together to make that merchant's row. Now, if you don't want to do this to individual buildings, you can actually find kits from manufacturers like Walther's that are specifically merchant's row sets. So you can also do that as well. But I'm taking these buildings and I'm just gluing them together. I guess you could call this a 3D kit bash hybrid type deal. Uh, not really sure there. For those of you that are wondering, this is two of my in-scale building ones, one of my in-scale building twos, and one of my in-scale building threes in that order from left to right. Now it is time to spray paint. And as with any time you're using spray paint, I always recommend that you prime the models first. I'm using some of Rust-Oleum's flat gray primer here as I use for just about everything. So I'm going to be priming these buildings first and then I'm also going to be priming the styrene sheets that I'm using for the base as well because I will be spray painting those too. 
Now, once those dry up, I go ahead and bring in my aged gray. This is one of the Rust-Oleum chalked colors, and it is my go-to concrete color. I absolutely love using this, and I just go ahead and spray a nice even coat across these seats of styrene. And even if I do miss some spots or doesn't get a little even, it's just going to have that darker concrete show through and give an uneven, weathered, aged look to it. So that's another reason why I like using dark gray primers as well. Now for the buildings, I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum's Colonial Red in a flat blend or a satin blend actually. And I'm going to just go and get this a nice even coat. Now this is one of the also the reasons why I super glued everything together first because I can get a nice even coat and make it look like everything was supposed to be there the way it was. So once everything is dry, this is going to be a nice even coat. And again, it looks a little glossy at first. Obviously it has to dry, but we're going to be doing some weathering to it as well. So go ahead and get this nice even coat and then let it dry. All right, so now you can see that obviously the satin has dulled a little bit. If this is still not dull enough to your liking, you can also use a dull coat or a matte spray or something like that that you can find at your hardware store or your local hobby shop or something like that. But I'm okay with this because we're also going to be using some weathering powders on this as well. But now it's time to paint all of the accents. And I'm going to be using a very light gray and acrylic and I start off with a very stiff bristle brush. Now, I'm not gonna walk through this entire process because I've actually done a deep detailing of all three of these buildings separately and I'm going to link them all right up here as well as at the end of the video for detailing so you can check those out but I'm going to go ahead and get everything painted up get all the details painted up and you can check out those videos if you really want details on how to paint each of those or how I paint buildings. Now, while all of that is drying, I'm gonna work on the styrene sheet. And you can see it's warped a little bit from the paint. So the way I'm gonna fix that is I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna use it on its lowest setting and I'm just going to wave it over the styrene sheet just to get it nice and warmed up and make it a little bit more malleable. And you wanna make sure you do this on a flat surface because it's gonna kinda of lay down just a little bit, which is really great. If you don't have a heat gun, you can always use a hair dryer. Don't use flames, obviously. Don't use any sort of lighter like that use a you can go find heat guns relatively cheap uh, but you can also use a hair dryer for these kind of things just don't ruin your wife's hair dryer uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this all evened out and flattened out and then I'm gonna take some of my steel one two three blocks and I'm gonna weigh it down and let it cool off into that shape once the styrene sheet has cooled off and reshaped, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my weights and then it's time to do the lighting work. And I'll be using a couple parts for this. The first thing I'm going to use is this little screw terminal electrical bus. These are really great. They're fairly compact. I'm also going to be using four warm white LEDs that are rated for up to 16 volts. And then I'm also going to be using one of these street lights from Eve model. Now, these are really, really great. I'll link them in the description below. You'll also want use a pin vise or some sort of really tiny drill for this as well and as a matter of fact the first thing I'm going to do is drill the hole for the street light and I'm using the pin vise I'm just eyeballing which bits gonna work best but you're gonna want a super small one and I go ahead and punch that hole right there now I've got the entire styrene sheet up on its side and I'm using some of those one two three blocks to hold it in place and I've got all of my lights right here and it's time to go ahead and attach them now the way that I'm attaching them is good old hot glue. I'm just gonna make a big enough bead right there just to hold it right in place. You'll notice that I'm doing it on the top side where the LED is. This is because I want it to go in as flush as possible so I don't want like a big blob of glue sitting on the bottom right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this process for all four LEDs that are going to be the building lights. Next, I threaded the wires for the street lamp, which are extremely tiny, through that hole that I had just punched. And once it was in place, I hit it with a little bit of hot glue to secure it down. Now 
now it's time to connect all of our wires to the bus. Now the bus you see here, I actually just used some more hot glue to secure it in place, which is a very great way to secure circuit boards like this because hot glue is an insulator rather than a conductor. Now for this, the A side that you can see that I'm screwing onto now, I'm using that as the positive or the anode side, which in this case are the brown wires for these LEDs. I've never seen brown wires as the anodes, but there's a first time for everything. And then on the other side, I'm going to be putting the black wires, which are the cathodes, the negatives on that B rail. Next, I connected a feeder to the main AB point that I'm going to be connecting to the main feeder through a little quick connector, and I'll link one of the one I'm going to use in the description below. Now that all the electrical work is in place on the base of this, I need to figure out where I need to cut to make room for this to sit down in the foam. This is another reason why I like using foam like this because you can cut little spaces, especially when you have electrical work or electronics like this. So I go ahead and cut out my section right here and then I just begin hollowing out until I've got enough depth for everything to be able to fit. And I'm also hollowing out around the main hole that I drilled, you can see that right there. But I ended up having to go two foam sections deep and I was using a screwdriver to chip out the foam I'd cut it into tiny little sections and I would then just kind of chip it away until I had the space needed you just got to be careful that you don't cut too far so that you don't expose any of the big hole outside of the styrene sheet Now I can feed the main power wire for this particular section through. I'm using 18 gauge wire that is stranded for this and once I get it down and in place and through, I go ahead and cut it to length and then after that I can go ahead and strip the ends of the wire and then I can put the quick connector on it. And I absolutely love these quick connectors. You've seen me use them plenty of times. They make things a lot easier on the model railroad. I then connect the feeders from the terminal on the module to that quick connector and then plug them in. That plug is going to be crucial for when we need to take it off to work on it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and test it, make sure that it fits okay. We're going to do a few other things when we do the final put down of it to make sure that it fits great and looks great. But right now, we just need to make sure that it fits okay. And then we can go ahead and plug it in. Now for that, I'm going to be using a barrel plug adapter that just has a little two position terminal strip and that's gonna plug right in and then I plug them in and you can see that the LEDs work. Now this is using a 12 volt power supply, which is not what my street lamp that I'm using for is rated for. It actually says that it needs a resistor if it's going to be plugged into something like that. Luckily the packaging includes a 1K resistor that I was able to go ahead and just solder into the anode line. And then I went ahead and wired everything up. And you can see that when I plug it in, it looks great, works great, doesn't burn out or anything like that. This solution according to the packaging is good for all the way up to 16 volts. And because I just wanna see how it looks, I went ahead and put my building block on there now that it was dry, but now it's time to get these things permanently on there. So let's begin with that work. We're going to be using CA, which you may know as super glue, and I'm going to be using a syringe to apply it. And that's because this stuff is extremely sticky and I don't wanna to use too much of it and I wanna make sure that I get it on in the right spot. So I'm using a syringe that uses just a couple of milliliters and I'm just putting it in spots to make sure. Now, when you're using this, you're also going to want to probably press down when you go to the final drying process but once you have these things in they're not going anywhere So this is how I do my weathering. I basically ground up pastels on sandpaper and then I dust them all over. They stick pretty well. If you wanna make sure they stick, you can always use some dull coat or something like that. I've gone over how I do this in great detail in those videos where I detail each one of these buildings individually. Again, those will be linked at the end of this video, but you can see that it's fairly easy to weather all, give these things a basic aging and weathering coat. Uh, just from doing this, it doesn't really take that much. 
I also do use the same uh, process on the sidewalk and you may also notice something here there are some cracks that was actually more of a happy accident from the acrylic styrene flexing and the two different paints and I ended up getting some cool little uh, cracks for my sidewalks. Now I'm not going to be adding too many details at the moment because this video is really about building the module, but I did want to add a couple things that are going to be really hard to add after the fact. Well, not really hard, but somewhat difficult, and those include signs. I'm going to be using signs from Titchy Train Group, some of my favorite signs out there. And the first thing I need to do is drill a very small hole with that pin vise for the sign to sit into, and then I'm just going to go ahead and stick the sign right in and then use some CA to secure it in place. Again, I'm going to be linking all of this in the description below, including the syringes I'm using and the glue that I'm using as well. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make when they are lighting buildings is they just literally stick a bulb up and do nothing else. Now, you can go really deep into this and do some lit backdrops and things like that in your buildings, but one simple thing you can do is add what's called diffusion. And basically what you wanna do is diffuse that point light from the LED all throughout the building so it looks like there's a bunch of rooms on rather than a single light source that's illuminating all of these rooms. And the way that I do this is I either use take some tissue paper or something that's relatively thin and I will wrap the LEDs and this basically makes a giant diffuser which is actually what we call it in the video world basically diffuses and softens the light so that it'll be more even throughout the interior. Now it's time to add the roofs, and these are the roofs that just come with these kits when I sell them on Etsy, and I spray painted them black. Very, very simple way to do this. Obviously, if you have a model kit, it probably comes with the roof, and if it doesn't, it comes with a styrene sheet to cut the roof. So those are some other ways that you can make these roofs. Uh, one thing you didn't see me do is you didn't see me put in windows. I'm not gonna put a ton of glue on these so that I can pop them off later because I may want to come in and do some detailed interiors, and of course, put on roofs, but I gotta collect enough acrylic or go buy some acrylic sheets to be able to make those windows. So for now, I'm going windowless with these buildings, but just know that I will probably be installing them at a later date when I go into heavy detail on these buildings. And now it's time for the big moment where we put this on the layout. Now, one thing you may notice is that there is some white spackle right here, and that is from where I'm doing the roads. Now, I'm going to be doing roads in a future episode as well. You'll see a little bit in an upcoming layout update, but I needed these roads, the, basically the spackle, the material in place so that I could make sure that everything was flat and even. So I did go, have to go ahead and do that before I put this in place, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna see how it looks. So there's the buildings. They look great. I do notice a little bit of something, particularly on those Building 1 models, and that is there is some slight light leakage from little gaps on the roof. So how am I going to fix that? Well, I grab some fabric paint that comes in these little tubes that you use to write those letters on your shirts and some slimes like that, and I use it to fill in those gaps. It kind of looks like a little bit of tar on the roof. Granted, it's not to scale at all, but this definitely helps out in filling those gaps. And here is the finished product. I'm personally very, very happy with the way this turned out. I can't wait till I have more scenery around it so that I can blend it in. But this is going to be a very nice looking scene for the trains to go by, especially with nighttime lighting like this. I am very happy with the way that this little modular building setup turned out. It turned out way better than my last attempt at this. So pretty happy about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I do want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for those $1 a month. A lot of cool stuff going on over there. Plus a free model of the month that you can 3D print yourself. 
every month at the $5 a month level. Now, if you want to learn some real details about how I detailed these buildings or just some tips and tricks on detailing model buildings, I've got several videos I've done detailing these buildings. I'll link them all at the end of the video as well as some other things as well. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Oh, uh, you ever just look at me like, yeah, that looks good. And then you're like, I got so much more work to do. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, no, 3D printed models, um, or if you're 3D printing yourself or you just want to get some experience on printing and, ah, oh,